I have a ton of pets that I love very much, including my 15 year old Pomeranian and I never thought I'd be able to love an animal as much as I love him. But all animals eventually pass away, unless they can live forever. What if you could clone your pet and have that animal for the rest of your life? This man is actually a goat. Well, he's the greatest of all time. His name is Tom Brady. Seven Super Bowl rings and every record you could possibly think of. And the reason I'm talking about a football player on my animal channel is because Tom Brady is also an animal lover. I know that because when his dog Lua passed away, he took a little sample of her blood and then made this dog out of it. This is Junie and Junie is a clone which means she didn't have a mother and father. She had a blood sample that was then, well, we're gonna explain how that works, but could you do this with other pets? Could you clone your dog or your bird or your amphibian or even your reptile? Now keep in mind, although I'm sure Tom loved his dog and just that's why he wanted to clone it, he's got a bajillion dollars. He's also an investor in the company that did it. Keep that in mind, which is by far the best commercial and publicity stunt of all time. If I were to own something like this, I would just clone my own dog and th that's like the best commercial ever. Viagen is a company that was founded in 2002. The same technology they used for Dolly the sheep way back in the day. That's what Viagen started with and their primary focus is on cloning family pets usually for obviously rich or very famous people. And remember those dire wolves that were cloned in March or we found out about it in March of this year? That was a project by this company called Colossal. Colossal now owns Viagen. That's why it matters. It'll matter more in a second. So here's how it works and here's how you can do it too using Viogen or a similar company. You take a sample of your dog's blood or tissue, either while they're still alive or shortly after they pass away, and then that sample gets frozen for future use. There's some culturing and stuff in between, but basically bring your dog in for a blood sample. It's kind of how it works. Scientists then make embryos using SCNT, somatic cell nuclear transfer. I'm just gonna use the acronym from here on out. Basically a donor somatic cell and preserved cell is fused with an egg cell whose nucleus was removed. Like imagine Harrison Ford taking the one thing and then like putting the other thing with it. Like it's kind of like that with a nucleus. Then that reconstituted egg is activated and they start developing an embryo. Then they take a surrogate dog and then put that embryo inside of that dog. And then they come to term and then they deliver the puppy or puppies and that's how you get a clone. Now keep in mind this seems complicated. I am not a scientist, I am a reporter and it took tons of mental clarity for me to wrap my head around it. But honestly, mental clarity has been kind of easy for me lately thanks to today's sponsor, MH01. I used to guzzle energy drinks all day just so I could keep some mental focus, make these videos, carry on all my other tasks, and I replaced it with MH01, and let me tell you, two big things. Less jittery being the main thing, this is subtle. I can focus without thinking about the fact that now all of a sudden I need to get up and go run a marathon. And uh, my bladder isn't always full with this, so I can actually sit at my desk and get the work done. I can focus and I don't have to pee every five minutes. Plus it's a convenient subscription service, which means it comes right to my door. I don't have to think I'm running out of this or that and go to the store, or order it. It just shows up every month. Plus, I like the way that it looks. It feels premium, looks nice. It's affordable. I like this stuff. It actually does really help me quite a bit. And I've been getting a lot more done since I started. So although I still enjoy an energy drink now and again, it's for the flavor of it, the taste of it, and I like it rather than I have to get this thing down my gullet in order to focus. That's where this comes in. Click the link or scan the QR code and we're doing 25% off right now on your first order. Plus it's free shipping on your first month if you're a US customer. Thanks MH01 for helping me with this video. Let's get back to explaining how cloning actually works. This is exactly how Tom Brady did it. The caveat here is, first of all, it costs about 50,000 American dollars, which by the way, is similar to what most Americans make in a year. And the kicker, this doesn't mean that the new dog or animal is going to act exactly like the clone animal or the original animal. Which means that if I took my dog Flutie, who I love more than anything, and a lot of it, not just because he's the cutest thing that ever lived, but because of his personality and the way he acts, that doesn't mean that if I cloned him, that animal would act the same. It would look exactly the same, but it might actually be weird because you have this dog that you grow accustomed to for 10 or 15 years in my case that you love so much and have this bond with and then you have an animal that looks exactly like this animal, but they have none of those memories. 
They don't know who you are. You have to create a brand new bond. All of those learned behaviors are gone and that animal is going to act probably most likely very differently, even though they look basically exactly the same. Now, why is it so expensive, which is going to matter when we talk about birds and reptiles, is because it is very advanced technology. The technology is very expensive. There's only a few companies who can do it, which means they can charge a lot of money on top of how expensive it already is. And it is low efficiency, which means a lot of the times you implant the embryo and then it just doesn't come to term, which means you need to do it again and again and again. Although it is relatively safe for the dog or animal that you put the embryo in, there's always a risk to that animal too, very much like humans, which is why if you're a surrogate, you get paid, you know, $50,000 or $100,000 to carry someone's baby to term. I actually don't know if that's legal or not, so don't do that if it's not legal. It happens though. And keep in mind, this isn't the first time. Barbara Streisand did this with her dog. Simon Cowell wants to do this with all three of his dogs, or maybe he already has. Either way, you're gonna need a lot of money and these companies will do it for you, which is cool, but for all those reasons I just mentioned, I don't know if I'd wanna do this. The reason I'm making this video is because I was talking about this with somebody in my family who is less than impressed. What she said was, yeah, well, if they can do it with dogs, couldn't they do it with other things like dinosaurs or humans. Well, humans maybe, that's a whole different thing. I'm not getting into that. That is like a ethics issue. But let's talk about the realities of doing it with dinosaurs or birds or reptiles. Because although you probably wouldn't want to clone your ball python, for example, I don't know, maybe you would if you had tons and tons and tons of money. But things like, I don't know, monitor species or maybe a really old, really smart reticulated python that you have a connection with, I think monitors are probably the best example here. I'm just gonna keep going. It's just frill dragons that are mating on the bottom of that enclosure. So could you do this with your favorite tree monitor or whatever animal that you wanna do that's a reptile? The short answer is probably not. And it's not just because there's not enough funding or, or care or people who wanna do it. Trust me, this seems like a Nicolas Cage thing, like Nick Cage would probably do this. It's just so very different and right now, not possible. Here's why. A lot of the times, embryonic development of reptiles is temperature determinant. I mean, realistically, you need a, a, the right temperature for an egg all the time for them to hatch, but also sometimes it's sex determinant, which means that the temperature that you incubate the egg at is going to make either a male or a female, like leopard geckos, for example, which is why almost every leopard gecko I ever made was female because I got to choose to make them. Where mammalian SCNT uses carefully controlled body temperature inside of a surrogate, for reptiles, there is no uterus. So embryos develop inside eggs that need precise external temperatures and humidity. Mimicking that artificially is extremely complex. Not only that, but think about what a reptile eggshell looks like. Reptile eggshells, especially in bigger animals, are leathery and difficult. Whereas with a human egg, it's pretty simple to do. I mean, just in terms of like the physics of it. With a reptile, it's much more differently to just implant the nucleus and then take a nucleus out or the other way around, obviously. So injecting a donor nucleus, I'm just gonna let the frogs go. Just, I, I, just let them go. Injecting a donor nucleus when letting that survive has never been achieved with reptiles or amphibians. Not only that, but cold-blooded animals regulate gene expression differently in early development and their cells reprogramming, which is the resetting that that clone requires, behaves differently in vitro. So you can't just copy and paste what we do with mammals and other animals that have eggs instead of giving live birth. Which I know your question is, okay, but what about boas and skinks and things that give live birth? It's still the same sort of idea. So where are we at in terms of the animal kingdoms? Well, with mammals, we've done it with many different species. With birds, there has been some progress. Some of the nucleus transfer and chimera work, but no clone has truly been achieved. Basically meaning that we've done it, but they don't hatch. Some of this transfer actually does work in frogs. So amphibians, it's experimental right now. It's one of those things that maybe could happen. But with reptiles, there's been basically zero progress. It's darn near impossible with the technology that we have now. But does that mean that if you're watching this video in 20 years, if YouTube is still a thing, that is going to be the same? Well, probably not because we see how fast technology is moving. And especially once we start cloning things that like Colossal is doing with extinct species or however you feel about it, whatever, making new species and calling it old species, the technology is still insane and we are actually cloning dogs. So it is possible to have with reptiles. It's just, we need a lot more funding and interest and think about it. There's way more people who are gonna do this with dogs or cats or whatever else 
then that would wanna do it with reptiles. And once we understand the early stages of embryo development and things like that with reptiles, I think that's part of why we're being really, I say it like I'm the one who thought about this, this is what scientists think is holding them back. Now reptile cloning is possible technically because of parthenogenesis, which I'll just make a note of here. Parthenogenesis is something that happens in several different types of reptiles. For example, the best known are morning geckos. Morning geckos, basically two females rub on each other and then eggs come out. There is no, you know, that normally happens with animals when they reproduce. And there's other species that have done this too. They even think ball pythons are capable of this with a 62 year old female at St. Louis Zoo having this happen not that long ago actually. Now we get to the ethics of it. And I don't have a staunch opinion on this. I don't really subscribe to this, you're playing God thing or whatever, like it's science. This is science. I personally think it's really cool and I think that what Colossal is doing is amazing, although I know because of this video, some of you um, really don't think so. I think it's really cool. I mean, we're in the infancy steps of it, right? If you saw those early aviation devices with the pedals and they was like a 13 second flight and then you said to somebody at that time, yeah, we're gonna be able to get over the ocean, in a few hours, or SpaceX is gonna be a thing and you're gonna be able to go from Houston to Australia in 45 minutes, you'd be like, yeah, that's that's insane. That's never gonna happen. And I think that this is very much like that. And although flight, as the example, was so unbelievably fast in development, I think this is gonna be even faster. And I think that YouTube is still gonna be a thing by the time I'm able to make a video and tell you, hey, I told you so, and reptiles are gonna have that option too. I just don't imagine too many people are gonna do it because I think it's gonna be more expensive than $50,000 and $100,000 to clone a pet reptile. It just, I don't know too many people that would do that. Let me know in the comments section below what you think about all of it. I wanna hear your opinion.